What's up everybody, Bandit and Chad here for another Taco Tuesday, and this week we swap tires. Right, so uh, to kind of further the build of the truck, you know, we were talking about last week about different tires that I am getting for my vehicle. Now, uh, I did order tires, I'm not going to tell you what they are until they get here, obviously, we'll show you and go over them and talk you through the whole process of, of uh, how I'm going to get them swapped out, but we switched wheels and tires. So uh, obviously the Tierty Offroads come with a 16 inch wheel standard and the Tierty Sports come with a 17 inch. So for the both of us, this is the first time that we've been living with a 16 inch for me and a 17 inch wheel for him. And we do have different opinions on the <laughs> tires that are very standard uh, on those vehicles. Um, I don't have any complaints personally about what's on my truck now, which is the Tierty Offroad uh, wheel and tire which are the Goodyear Wranglers with the Kevlar sidewalls. Um, I did actually get the opportunity to take them out in the snow the other day. Uh, here, down here in Blacksburg over the past week we've gotten a total of like nearly 20 inches um, just at two different periods in time but I did get to drive the vehicle uh, out on the roads in the snow and I actually did put it in four-wheel drive and it did fine. Um, I don't have any complaints about the tires and even uh, the difference of uh, like sound between the two tires are both very similar uh, and yeah, I don't really have any issues with them, but now, what, what's your take? My yeah. week with what we're now calling the Firestone No Traction Highway Terrains <laughs> is uh, not very good. Uh, you know, I, I'm used to having a good amount of uh, wet snow traction and, uh, you know, just more traction on gravel roads and everything else. Uh, but just my week, even in the rain, I was losing traction. Now, whether that's because my truck has the shorter wheelbase, uh, is a little bit, I guess, more tossable or, or uh, you know, whatever you want to consider it. Uh, but there were several times throughout the last week where you know, I'd be going around a roundabout or something like that and the back end would decide to step out. Well, I didn't buy a truck because I like the back end stepping out. I bought a truck because, you know, in most conditions, it's a, a fine vehicle to ride around in. Uh, so, you know, it was kind of fun. I did try out my Ken Block abilities and uh, we'll leave the <laughs> Ken Blocking to him. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a hoonigan, let's put it that way. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it was okay. Um, they are, I would say, maybe a little bit smoother on the highway, but overall, there's not a huge difference. Um, if you're looking into getting one of these trucks now, uh, I think for most conditions, if you do experience winter weather, uh, more than likely you're going to be happier on the good years that come standard, like Chad was saying, on the TRD off-road. Uh, but either tire is okay. Um, but one thing to point out, those good years are mud and snow rated where the Firestones are not. Right. Um, so that They're is just a standard all-season tire, which right. uh, honestly, I guess, you know, they, they do a little bit uh, better in the dry conditions. You know, uh, I did have those tires on my truck for just about 27,000 miles and they're probably good until nearly 60,000 depending on how you drive them and honestly since you know I've taken the truck off road with those tires I'm sure I cut down on the life of them um, but yeah so I mean they're definitely not the greatest tires out there right and uh, to kind of explain all of this um, if Chad is going to continue taking his truck off-road, it makes a lot more sense for him to buy new tires that accommodate a 16-inch wheel. The reason for that is with a 16-inch wheel and given you have roughly the same size tire, you will have more sidewall. Uh, I already purchased new wheels. Uh, they're actually sitting in my garage right now. Um, so I won't be using the TRD off-road wheels anymore. So it made the most sense for Chad to get those and uh, we'll end up selling his uh, uh, charity sport wheels or anything like that so if you're interested in in those be sure and let us know uh, we are in Virginia and uh, you know we could certainly transport them somewhere nearby uh, so if you are interested in those let us know uh, but that is kind of the reason I'm not gonna get stuck on the Firestone no traction highway terrains uh, and I will be getting new tires as well here in the next coming weeks um, but that is all in the future and we'll be sure to keep you all updated on all of that one other quick thing though about the uh, wheels and tires the combination uh, it seems like the Tierty off-road wheels in my opinion can make just about any other truck uh, Toyota Tacoma specifically um, it would make them look better when we move the Tierty Sport wheels over to uh, Bandit's truck the Tierty off-road it doesn't look good at all in no. my opinion and no. he, he agrees now so. I, I completely agree however uh, like Chad was saying the Tierty off-road wheels here on the Sport look awesome and uh, we'll do a quick paint around here real quick to show you all of that so here's a look at Chad's TRD Sport now. As you can see, we do have the RCI bed rack installed and the TRD off-road wheels and tires. And I think the truck has a really nice look to it. We'll get down here so you can see the RCI skid plate and everything. Uh, but overall, I think the truck looks really great. Now I'll move over here to my TRD off-road with the sport wheels. And you tell me what you all think. We personally don't think it looks quite as good. Um, 
but that's that's for you all to determine but uh, all of this will be getting swapped around here pretty soon uh, again Chad is keeping those wheels but getting di different tires and I'll be getting an entirely new setup so stay tuned for all of that so moving into some uh news for the week. Uh, we were just talking about it and we honestly should have gotten this on camera, but uh, Toyota has been kind of toting around this egg. Um, it, it's an actual egg, like a very large egg, uh, about the size of a Corolla. It's not an actual egg, Chad. There's, it, it did not come from a bird. It did not come from a bird. Uh, I don't think, to well, I guess Toyota kind of laid this egg, but anyhow, um, <laughs> this um, egg <laughs> hatched recently and it's kind of a play on words we did just kind of discover that for ourselves just kind of talking through it like oh that kind of makes sense so toyota did show ahead of its uh, i guess official new york debut uh the toyota corolla hatchback which was the toyota corolla im which used to be a scion model um kind of like a hatchback of its own but now it's on toyota's new global architecture uh platform and it's really, really cool. We actually really, really like it. Um, and it looks really sporty. And it does come with some sportier options. Now, um, one of them is a new uh, two liter uh, inline four engine. It's not turbocharged, but it is making more power and it has better thermal efficiency than the previous generation Corolla did. Uh, so that's a good thing uh, because it's kind of a win-win. You are getting more power uh, and greater efficiency out of it. And it's using this new CVT that we did talk about just recently that does have um, a takeoff gear in it that uh, it will switch off of once it has kind of uh, used that as a first gear and then it'll switch into CVT mode um, pretty seamlessly from what I understand. And it's a lot more efficient than the uh, regular CVT that it did have before. Right, and the most exciting part about this is they're still keeping a manual transmission. So you're gonna be able to get the more powerful engine now with a manual transmission. And there's also quite a few interior upgrades right so on the interior um, it obviously is much more modernized you know the previous Corolla I mean it doesn't look bad at all but they did definitely add a lot of uh, other nice amenities to the inside one of them more notably is Apple CarPlay which you know if you have kind of kept up with the uh, automotive like uh, interfaces of Toyota's recently uh, Toyota hasn't been able to come to an agreement with Apple or Android but they finally did and they pulled the trigger on putting uh, Apple CarPlay in the um, Toyota Corolla hatchback. Now, I would assume that they're going to start rolling this out uh, to the rest of their vehicles. I believe their next slated one is going to be the Camry or Sienna, if they're already running it. I don't remember. Um, but you're going to start seeing that in all of Toyota's models here in the future, and I would anticipate Android uh, to be able to put a, a Android Auto into their uh, vehicles. Now, one really, really cool thing about the uh, six-speed manual transmission that's coming with it is it's considered an intelligent manual transmission or something to that effect. And there's even a button to turn this on and off. And it's auto rev matching. So this is a really, really cool thing. If you did see uh, the video that I did with Chuck, uh, his Corvette and that seven speed manual transmission does do the auto rev matching, which is a really, really, really cool feature. You know, we're used to heel towing when we drive manual transmissions to rev match. And it's kind of a fun feeling, but if you don't want to do it and you want the computer to do it all for yourself, this Corolla is going to have it. So the Corolla is uh, becoming really, really sporty and it's really exciting to see that. Right, and hopefully we'll see more of this active rev matching here in the future. You know, the new Supra is slotted to come out here before too long, which is again co-developed with BMW. It's not certain yet whether or not that we're going to see a manual transmission in that car. There's been a lot of talk on uh, some kind of advanced automatic transmission to make it sportier and to uh, you know increase lap times or whatever else. But personally, I don't think a lot of people buy a Supra or really a Corvette or anything like that just to take it to the track. I think it's more or less a toy. It's a fun vehicle and uh, to have the most fun out of it you really need to keep that manual transmission right. so hopefully we'll see that technology in the new Supra obviously this is just speculation for right now uh, but what is not speculation is what's gonna happen on Wednesday Right, so this coming Wednesday uh, at the New York Auto Show, Toyota is going to be showing us the next generation Toyota RAV4. And uh, what we think is that Toyota is basically going to be having their um, version of the FTAC that we did see. So this is, you know, the concept that we did see a couple months ago. And it is about the same size and shape of a RAV4, kind of mixed up 
with uh, some Lexus uh, hints and cues in there, and I believe they're going to be bringing that over to the RAV4, making it, you know, ultimately a more aggressive and sporty look, kind of like this next generation Tacoma that we're in right now, um, compared to the second generation Tacoma. Uh, it is a lot, you know, better looking and, you know, kind of screams sporty. Right, and in my opinion, what they kind of do is trying to diversify their uh, current lineup. So, you know, you have the Tacoma, you have the Tundra and the 4Runner that are very good off-road vehicles, uh, but the 4Runner has gotten a lot larger since when it started out, and uh, I think they kind of need a little bit smaller vehicle to kind of carry out this adventure lifestyle that they're trying to promote with these vehicles. If you remember, the current RAV4 does have an adventure uh, trim level, and uh, I think they'll probably try to carry this out even more with the new RAV4. Now, with that being said, we're also talking about the Corolla hatchback and a lot of the other more road-going cars, and I think they're trying to make those even more sporty as well. So uh, really cool that Toyota is trying to be more interesting and more fun uh, instead of just being uh, kind of, you know, conservative and, uh, you know, just based on reliability and that kind of stuff. Because obviously uh, you got to be a little bit interesting to sell some vehicles. Now, one company that has been really good recently about being interesting is FCA, and especially with the Jeep lineup. Now, the 52nd Easter Jeep Safari is about to go underway, and uh, as always, Jeep does reveal their concepts for the Easter Jeep Safari uh, a week or so beforehand. Uh, so there's seven new vehicles that did come out here uh, that they will be showing off, and uh, a lot of those vehicles are just built on more Mopar parts that are coming out. You know, we did talk about that with the Ram 1500 and how that, uh, you know, Ram and Jeep have a lot of aftermarket, basically, add-ons that you can add at the dealer uh, to increase either the performance or the off-road capability or whatever on your vehicle. Now, also, they do have a couple throwback vehicles uh, from the past. My favorite is the 1965 Wagoneer that they have, uh, which has the new 5.7 V8 in it. So, that would be a really awesome vehicle to pile your friends in and tote your family around and uh, just go off-roading or uh, go on picnics or whatever else. I think it'd be a really fun vehicle to have. Now, uh, a lot of these vehicles, since they are Jeeps and the new JL is out, a lot of these vehicles are based off the JL platform. Uh, one of them is a throwback to the original Jeepsters uh, back in the day. Uh, this one is built off of a new JL Rubicon, uh, but it has a lot of the similar characteristics and styling to the old Jeepster. So a really interesting idea there. Uh, and my favorite new uh, concept here is the JL 4-speed. Uh, so they took a normal two-door JL and uh, stripped it down. They took the bumpers off, which shaved several inches in overall length uh, while keeping the same wheelbase. And they're saying that this concept also has the turbo four-cylinder in as the uh, power plant for that vehicle. So with the lightweight nature of this, with uh, you know shaving weight, they did a lot of aluminum body panels and everything like that, even more than the JL already has. Uh, but they're saying with all of that saved weight, the overall chassis was raised two inches. So they basically got a two inch lift, basically just by removing parts with all the same stock suspension. Uh, so a really cool idea. I would love to see them market one of these more stripped down Wranglers uh, instead of all of the options and everything else. Because if you can just get a really inexpensive stripped down Wrangler, uh, throw some big tires on there and just go have a blast. I think that's what Jeeps are all about and uh, I think it would certainly make a splash in the market. So that's basically all we have to talk about for this week. Thank you all very much for staying with us and tuning in uh, for another Taco Tuesday. Be sure and let us know what you think in the comments below. Also be sure and subscribe and like this video. We do really appreciate the support. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a fantastic week everybody. Catch you next time. See you guys.